Aloha! Welcome to your online College of Natural Sciences orientation. This orientation was designed just for students who will be entering the College of Natural Sciences at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Before we get started with this module, if you have a disability and need assistance with registration, please contact our Kokua office. The Kokua office can be reached by phone at 808-956-7511 or by email at kokua at hawaii.edu. Knowing which courses to register for will require you to have either completed the chemistry and mathematics placement exams as required by your major or have earned the necessary transfer credits in chemistry and mathematics. So if you've not taken your placement exams yet and you haven't earned the necessary transfer credits in chemistry and math, then go back to the placement exam modules, watch those videos, and complete the placement exams to obtain your placement exam scores. Once that's done, come back to this video to learn about registering through GPS. In addition to having your placement exam scores, it's important to ensure that your academic plan for the next semester has been finalized. In Module 4, we discussed how to make sure your GPS registration tab in STAR is all set for registration. Be careful to not adjust your plan too much. If you're making too many changes, you could be significantly pushing back your graduation date by up to a year or even more. If you need assistance with updating your schedule, you can refer to Module 4 or book an appointment with an academic advisor after completing the online orientation. Okay, now that you have your placement exam scores in hand and your plan is finalized, it's time to register. Click on the register add slash drop courses button that corresponds with your first Manoa semester so that we can get started. After proceeding to GPS registration, you may encounter a pre-registration checklist. This checklist just ensures that you know of any holds that are on your account and also ensures that we have your most up-to-date contact information before you begin the registration process. If you need to update your student record, please ensure that the phone number listed belongs to you and not your parents. Otherwise, we might end up calling your parents if you're running late for an advising appointment. If you have any holds on your account, then you can see them in several ways. First, you should have received an email when the hold was initially placed. Second, you can view holds through one of the tiles in MyUH services called View Holds on My Record. Third, you can view them through STAR either on the View Holds button on the GPS Registration tab or on your pre-registration checklist in the GPS Registration tool. In this case, I don't have any holds, but here's a picture of what a hold might look like. Holds are always accompanied with contact information for the office that placed the hold. If you have questions about your hold, please contact the corresponding office. Once you've acknowledged your holds and you've updated your contact information, you can then proceed to registration. In this case, I'm just going to preview registration, which doesn't actually let me register, but still lets me view the interface. Now we're on the main registration page. From here, all of your requirements that you planned to take in this semester are laid out in a list for you. We recommend registering for important lectures for your major first, other courses second, and labs last, since it's easier to try to fit lab classes into where you have big empty spaces in your schedule. If you plugged in your courses correctly from the planner page, then this should be really easy. We'll start off with main lecture courses for your major. I'm going to select this ICS lecture since I am a computer science major. I know that this course will be important for my major progress. Once I've plugged in those lecture courses, I can view them here on my calendar. Now I'm going to register for my physics lecture. You can see that I have a lot of options presented to me. On the planning page, I opted to take Physics 152 and not Physics 272. That's why Physics 152 is pulled up to the top and you can also see the favorite tag placed on the course. As mentioned before, I'm going to save my lab for last. As I continue on and begin to select courses that are not as crucial to my major progress, I find myself with more options. I didn't narrow down my options for these two courses on the previous page, so I'll show you two different methods for narrowing them down from the GPS registration tab. First, let's take a look at the language course. Let's say I do not have any previous experience in a non-English language, but I've always wanted to learn Spanish. So I'm going to select Spanish, or S-P-A-N, from the course alpha list. Once I hit the search button, only Spanish courses are showing, which makes it a little easier for me to pick my classes. Based on my current schedule, this time will work the best for me. Now I'll select a global and multicultural perspectives course. This list is already narrowed down for me a little bit because I took History 151, an FGA course, in a previous semester. I don't have to remember to exclude the FGA courses because GPS already does that for me. Personally, I don't have too much of a preference when it comes to which class I take for this requirement. Instead, I want to select a course that fits in well with my schedule. 
I currently have a lot of free time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I think I might want to pick a class that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll check off those blocks under the day section. Next, I think I want to take a class that's either at 1.30 p.m. or later. So I'll click on the first time drop down menu and select 1.30 p.m. I'll leave the second one open-ended because I don't mind how late I stay on campus. Then I'll click the search button to narrow down my results. What's left are the courses that fit my search criteria. If you make your search criteria too specific, then it may be difficult to find courses that fit your needs. So for example, if I say that I want a course that's also offered on Saturday and I click search, the only thing that's going to show are the online classes because those classes can be taken at any day of the week. But I don't actually want to come in on Saturday, so I'm going to uncheck that and undo that search result. If you find that the list is too narrow, you can broaden your search terms a little bit and that might help. For example, maybe I'll leave the time open-ended and just say Tuesday and Thursday. Let's see how many more results I get then. Quite a bit more. But I was actually okay with what I had, so let's see what comes up here. This Language in Hawaii course looks pretty interesting to me, so I think I'll pick this one. And I'll double check my schedule just to make sure that I don't see anything that looks really bad. One thing that you always have to remember when you're building your schedule is that now you're scheduling your own classes. That means you need to remember to schedule things like lunch. Now that that class is plugged in, the very last class that I'll add is my lab class. It's a lot easier now to see which classes will fit into the schedule that I currently have because any class that has a time conflict will say time conflict and I won't be able to click on the circle that will allow me to plug the class into my schedule. I think this Tuesday lab works pretty well with me, so I'm going to leave it like this. Now my schedule is finalized and exactly where I want it. I'll click on the Continue button, which brings me back to the main registration page. I can click the Submit button to finalize my registration, but in this case, because I'm in preview mode, I can't submit these courses. But you would be able to do this on your own account as long as it's your registration time. You'll know that you've successfully registered for your classes when they've all changed from yellow pending courses to green registered courses. From this page, I can view my tuition charges by either clicking on the view slash pay button or the make payment button. I can also see the textbooks that I'll need for the classes that I signed up for by clicking on the menu button, which are the three lines in the upper right hand corner of the screen. From there, select textbooks and you'll be taken to the bookstore website where you can view all of the required textbooks for your classes as well as other options such as ebooks and textbook rentals. In this case, because I'm not actually registered for any classes, the textbook item is not currently on the menu, but I promise it will be there when you actually register for your classes. Now I'm going to go back to the graduation pathway and I think I'm going to register for a couple classes for summer 2018. I'll be demonstrating two things here. First, I will show you how to search for courses that fulfill specific focus requirements. Second, I will show you how to add yourself to a course's waitlist. To demonstrate searching for focus requirements, I am first going to add a personal choice course to my list. Next, I'm going to click Select a Course. From here, I'm back to the familiar course searching page. On the left-hand side, at the bottom, there is a link that says Show More Filters. I'm going to click on that to expand my menu. Now I can see the focus attributes. As discussed previously in Module 4, you can view your remaining focus requirements from the GPS Registration tab. Let's say I want to find a course that fulfills both the HAP requirement and a Writing Intensive requirement. I can then check off both of those boxes and click the Search button. This will show me all of the courses being offered this summer that fulfill both requirements. I can even get more specific and write things like hide classes with prerequisite requirements or only show classes that are completely online. I think I'll pick this American Studies class. Next, let's talk about waitlisting. In reality, I don't need to take Math 140, but for the sake of demonstrating the waitlist function to you, I'm going to look at Math 140 classes that are being offered this summer. To search for that class specifically, I'll type math into the course alpha, and then change the course numbers to 140. You will notice that one of the courses has no open seats. There is a notation next to it that says waitlist only. 
When I click on the waitlist only link, it expands the course information and a waitlist this class button appears towards the bottom. By clicking that button, I can add myself to the waitlist. Keep in mind that a waitlist is not an official registration. So in the meantime, if I really needed this course, I would probably actually register for the open section. And then later, if the waitlist section opens, I would be on the waitlist while also having registered for this class. So I would then be notified of the waitlist opening. This was your crash course on GPS registration. You'll probably have some more questions, but you can definitely save those for when you meet with your academic advisor. For now, it's time for your mini quiz. Keep star open to refer to it while you're answering these questions.